Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 24, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. Now, it is not an active astrological week, but it is a profound one. The energy is strong, it will be felt, and it will be felt in some ways beyond what we would expect. And so what am I talking about? Mercury, we're gonna start there. Because it is Mercury that right at the beginning of the week will meet Neptune in the sky. And normally, Mercury will meet Neptune about once a year or so. But this year is a little bit different because we are in a Mercury retrograde season. So it was back right around the middle of February when Mercury first met Neptune, very quickly moved on. And then it was early this month that Mercury went retrograde. Well, this week, as we start the week, these two planets will connect again, but it is Mercury that is slowing right down now and will stand still in the sky, officially going direct on Thursday, while still hand in hand with Neptune. And this energy is going to continue into this week and next week as well. And what this is going to do is in one way, it's kind of going to extend the Mercury retrograde energy. So just when we think it's over and just when we think here comes Mercury direct and what tends to happen with any normal Mercury direct is that we have a light bulb moment. We have this sense of clarity and momentum that comes often in an instant. We feel that energy shift, but this time is going to be a little bit different. It's going to feel like that Mercury retrograde has extended throughout the week and right into next week as well. At the end of next week, we are going to have a new moon take place. When that new moon happens, that is going to be the shift of energy. So it's almost like we're waiting until we get there after that new moon and the week forward that is when mercury will start having certain stabilizing and empowered alliances with other power players while still in shadow and that is when it is really going to start to feel like we are gaining momentum and we are moving forward beyond the mercury retrograde season so be a little patient with this energy and i would say as they like to say, as the ancients said, as people like to say, um, Mercury retrograde season is not the time to sign contracts or documents or come to any kind of uh, agreements. It is not the time to make big, uh, conclusive and consequential decisions about your life or otherwise. Now, of course, you have to trust your life as well. Things are gonna be what they need to be and you let them come up as they need to. But where it is that you have some control or where it is that you can help it, um, that's where normally Mercury retrograde, not the time for these things that I mentioned. However, because of that connection with Neptune, because of the continuation of what's going to feel like Mercury retrograde, I would say if you can help it, try not to come to any big uh, conclusive decisions or agreements throughout not only this week but next week as well it is going to be the following week after that that the agreements that are made are going to have a sense of longevity to them but also clarity and there's a sense especially once we get to mercury speaking in harmony with pluto as we move further into april well that is when a real power deal uh, and a strong agreement can be made. And again, I will be here to talk about it every single step of the way. Now, of course, this energy, what I've been calling Neptunian energy, is because Mercury has been going through this retrograde season, not only hand in hand with Neptune, but in the sign of Pisces as well, the home sign of Neptune. And it has been during this time that we have had to look at a few different things as a collective. Now, this is a part of the sky that has to do with closures, but it also has to do with confusion as well. And it has to do with looking at our own disappointments uh, in our life. Yes, but as a collective as well. And I do think that this has been a particularly emotional uh, Mercury retrograde season for a lot of people. 
And there have been uh, subjects that have been discussed where we've looked at, collectively speaking, um, where it is that there's been scandal, where it is that secrets have been revealed, but also where it is that we might have felt disappointed and had strong emotional reactions, especially to recent events that have taken place as part of the collective. Now, ultimately, my hope always, and I do think that especially with the Piscean energy, the higher understanding is healing. It is compassion. It is unity. And all of us have been invited to consider what that would look like and what that would feel like as part of our own individual journeys. Earlier today, I did the last class as part of the recent series of Synchronicity University. And in that series, we talked about a lot of different things, but today in particular, we talked about forgiveness. It was an incredible group of people. And we talked about this very energy, this idea of healthy closures and where it is that forgiveness towards not only others, but towards ourself takes place as part of any spiritual journey. And that any kind of forgiveness is not about another person. It is something we do so that we can truly be free and fully be ourselves where we are today and embrace all that we are today. And we talked about how a lot of times your journey of forgiveness may be a solitary one. And in many ways, if you are looking to someone else to validate that sense of forgiveness, um, then that's where we have to question our motives of where it is that that uh, desire for genuine healing comes from. And I think that that has been part of the journey for a lot of people over these last few weeks of the Mercury retrograde season. And this energy has played out in different areas of life, depending on your sun sign or moon sign or rising sign, where this energy has been taking place in your unique birth chart. But for all of us, there has been at least one area of life. Where we've had to look at what has disappointed us. We have had to practice greater self-acceptance. We've had to take responsibility for our own healing and our own sense of where it is that we are truly ready to put some baggage down so that we can be open to the new and the next. Now that sense of newness is already starting and that is because the sun recently moved into the sign of Aries, that's the astrological new year. Um, and that is an energy that tends to represent uh, freshness and aliveness and the beginning and burst of growth set to take place in our lives. And so having this particular uh, sense of an extended Piscean energy and a concentrated Piscean energy has allowed us to contemplate that much more deeply and to talk about, to bring words to, to bring an energy of intelligence and intellect and even imagination to what a more healed self, a more healed life, a more unified world, what could that look like? And what does it mean to have genuine compassion for each other and for ourselves? It's been a topic of contemplation and conversation. Well, all of this is actually part of a larger wisdom because then we are gonna to get to the point where, as we now have the sun in Aries, now that Mercury will go direct on Thursday and march forward from here, uh, just a few weeks down the road, we are going to have Mercury enter the sign of Aries. And that's going to bring with it fresh perspectives and fresh thoughts and ideas of where it is that we are ready to begin and begin again in powerful ways and exercise greater initiative in the direction that we desire to go. It is about moving forward. And so right now, yes, we've had this extended time where we get to contemplate more deeply uh, where it is that we are in our personal journey and what it is that we don't need to carry, whether it's pain, whether it's the past, um, or whether it is even feelings that no longer serve us, perceptions that no longer serve us, in our spiritual journey and our journey towards a greater sense of connection to each other, to everyone and to everything. So these have been part of the contemplations. There is always a wisdom playing out in the universe and it is ultimately gonna lead us to that point where we're ready to speak again and express ourselves in ways that have a renewed sense and even a new sense of self-knowledge 
and a confidence as well coming forward from that place. And so that is coming up very soon, right around the corner. That is energy we are going to be tapping into more and more once we get to the end of next week, because we are going to have that new moon. And as I said, I'll talk about it every single step of the way. Traditional forms of astrology articulated how it is that planets behave in different signs. And so some planets are considered to be in what's called detriment in certain signs that they really don't like to be in that sign. They're not able to as easily express their best qualities. Um, but in some signs, some planets are considered exalted, which means they're able to bring forward their very best qualities. Well, it is in the sign of Pisces that Venus is considered exalted and she enjoys being in this sign. She's able to bring forward her sense of beauty, but connect it to spirit as well. Her sense of joy, but able to connect it to a sense of connection to others. Um, and this idea of Pisces being connected to arts and music is also very Venusian as well. And so as Venus moves into the sign of Pisces, being an exalted energy makes that energy especially strong in the world and for us, makes that energy that much more easy for all of us to access. And it also means that the blessings are that much bigger. Venus is and has been uh, contemplated as what's called a lower benefic. Again, this is a more traditional way of looking at astrology. And so a higher benefic uh, is Jupiter, right? That's like a, a greater blessing planet is Jupiter. And then the lower benefic, which is a planet that is a blessing, but in less of a way, well, that is of Venus. And so Venus moving into the sign of Pisces is able to bring blessings, but magnify them that much more. And what these blessings could be uh, for you and how quickly it is that we could realize these blessings are going to become evident very quickly when late Wednesday or Thursday, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, that is when we are going to have uh, Venus speak with Uranus in harmony. Now, I just love this energy. It is one of romantic surprises. It is one of delight. That is the key word, delightful, is this energy. And just very spontaneous moments uh, that can catch us off guard, but ultimately allow us to expand our heart, allow us to understand love differently. Now, the interesting thing is, when we look at an understanding of a planet as exalted, that is a traditional way of understanding the chart. When we look at uh, the planet Uranus, well, Uranus is very much about modern astrology. In fact, the discovery of Uranus is said to be one of those points where uh, the traditional uh, astrological systems and the more modern astrological systems are kind of divided right around the time of the discovery of Uranus. But I think that in our world today, the great thing is, is that we have these way of bringing the different articulations and knowledges together. And absolutely, we can take Venus in exaltation, Venus in this uh, strong spiritual state, uh, in a very sensuous state at that. If you think about the sign of Venus uh, in Pisces, this is an energy of love as sacrifice, love as giving, love as communion, uh, beyond just the merging of Scorpio, but the really diving into the full emotion and experience of love. So that energy is gonna be that much more heightened for us globally. And then you add this element where our understanding of what that looks like in our modern world, can come about in very surprising, if not moments that uh, catch the attention of the collective very quickly. For example, uh, viral digital moments. And so we can have a look out for that. Where is it that some expression of love, whether it's universal love or romantic love, uh, very quickly starts to kind of take over the planet and is something that a whole lot of us are talking about. I do feel like there's always divine wisdom and divine timing playing out with all the different celestial uh, conversations. There is a certain tapestry that interweaves as part of this. And I feel like it is so powerful considering our recent events, 
uh, considering how it is recent events because we've had this Mercury retrograde season uh, and how that is spoken to us. And now here we are with Venus ready to enter the same part of the sky where we have felt uh, confusion and delusion and disillusionment uh, and sadness and will now bring a heightened awareness of compassion and love for ourselves and for each other. And we will feel that energy very quickly and it will become that much more dominant quickly as well. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here, but I do love Venus and exaltation, okay? I think that that is such a beautiful energy. It is one to celebrate. It is one that says we are being encouraged in some way to heighten our awareness of love, but also to bring forward our most loving selves and all of our moments and to allow love to permeate through all of our lives. Where is it that we are ready to bring love to those very parts of ourselves that we judge, uh, that we don't accept, those very parts of ourselves that we tell ourselves, oh, it's okay, I accept it, but I really, really wish it was different. Where is it that we have been critical or overthinking the journey of love and what that really means? And where is it now that we are just ready to feel? Feel absolute love and acceptance for ourselves and for each other. Where is it that we are ready to connect with a spirit of universal love and know that it's not just some concept out there in the ether, but that we are expressions of that very energy that we call love, that I like to call love and wisdom. And where is it in our own lives that we can more fully express love for ourselves and for each other? Well, it is gonna be Venus and exaltation that's gonna invite us to do just that, but more importantly, what our unique expression of that universal love and how it is that it can make our entire sphere of influence in our own lives so much better. Well, that realization is gonna come on very quickly. It will be a burst of absolute inspiration. Because of the nature of the conversation between Venus and Uranus, called a sextile, which is considered an easy aspect, but it's one that requires action to maximize well, I think that it is going to be an insight, a flash of brilliance that we are willing to hustle towards to make the most of. And it is in those very actions that we take that we truly will become a force of healing in the world. And if you have any doubt how healing love can be and how loving one person can be, we are about to find an abundance of examples right where you are. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? And how has your Mercury retrograde season been going? I love reading you guys. Let me know in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to reading all about your Mercury retrograde. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing about your Venus in Aquarius uh, season and how exciting it is to be looking forward to Venus moving through the sign of Pisces as well. If you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Please be sure to visit our sponsor for this video, Ka Gold Jewelry. The link is in the description below. They make incredible astrological and spiritual talismans, amulets, uh, sacred jewelry, and so much more. It really is very, very beautiful. Even if you just go for the inspiration on their website, it really is very special. So again, see the link in the description below and let me know what you think. And if you have purchased anything from them, let me know in the comments below how it was, what you thought. I look forward to reading you uh, and your testimony for Ka Gold Jewelry. Again, link in the description below. I have some events coming up. Well, I already mentioned, I just did the last class to Synchronicity University. Thank you so much to the amazing students who came out. All of those classes are now available for download on my website, 
nadiashaw.com so you can check that out as well the forgiveness class was a uh, very popular a lot of students signed up for that and i thank you thank you for your trust thank you for making it an amazing session and i'm looking forward to what is next with synchronicity university so i have a lot of live events coming up so that's the next focus now that i'm really very excited about i have uh, an event coming up in uh, May in Vancouver and in May in Seattle. So in Vancouver, I will be speaking with the Fraser Valley Astrology Guild. And I will be speaking at their Thursday night meeting and then doing a workshop, a half day workshop on Saturday. Um, one of the classes is on life purpose in the astrology chart. Another class is on luck and fortune in the astrology chart. Uh, so you can visit the link below and I hope to meet you in Vancouver. I'm really excited about being back. Vancouver is one of my absolute favorite cities on the planet. So I think it's gonna be just incredible and fun and lovely. Uh, so looking forward to an incredible group out there and learning together. Now those classes are available on uh, my website with Synchronicity University. If you can't uh, actually be there in person, you can download that. However, of course in person, there's always this amazing energy, right? So if you can be there, it would be great. I love meeting friends and fans in person always. And I always bring gifts as well. So you will get a, a little gift from me, a thank you gift for being there. Now, I will be speaking Memorial Day weekend at the Norwat Conference, which is in Seattle. And that conference uh, is an incredible event as well. It's long running. It's been there for years and years. People love it. Some of the most incredible astrologers on the planet will be speaking there. It is a full on conference. And so again, I'm gonna link to it in the description below. If you're anywhere near Seattle, right around Memorial Day weekend, it would be incredible to meet you. And I will also be speaking at uh, Labor Day weekend in Baltimore for the NCGR conference. And I'm really looking forward to being back in Baltimore. Uh, I guess the last time I was there was, uh, by the time I get there Labor Day weekend, it'll be three years earlier when we spoke there, or when I spoke there rather, when we had the last NCGR conference. So that'll be a lot of fun and I will link to that below as well. Another event that I do have coming up as part of affirming a, a continued mission that I'm looking to explore more and more this year and next year with all the rare and important astrological um, aspects that are coming up, I will be announcing many different events uh, now and in the future. And one of the events that I do believe is going to be very special indeed is the uh, cruise that I will be doing. So recently I did live events in Las Vegas and in Mexico and I saw how uh, life changing it can actually be, especially in Mexico, to have people sort of brought together, karmically drawn together to explore and to learn spiritual topics and astrology and how it is that it can change you being out of your comfort zone and how it is that the people who do come together, there uh, is some karmic link there and how uh, this group creates trust and can build on uh, their own spiritual journeys through the help of each other. And how it is that these journeys really can change you in profound ways that stay with you for a very, very long time to come. That's how I felt just being a guest uh, at the event that I did recently in Shishim, Mexico. And so as part of this, uh, it inspired me that much more uh, to be part of a cruise event. And this cruise uh, is love, joy, hope, and transformation. It features many world-class astrologers and spiritual teachers. Uh, and it is going to be one of those experiences that will stay with you and stay with me for a very, very long time after it is over. Uh, there is a uh, sign up price for the classes that are going to take place on board. Uh, and then there is a separate uh, travel agency that is covering the actual cruise and making sure that you get your cabin. 
Now the price that is given is a per person based on a double occupancy. If it is that you're traveling solo, like I like to do a lot as well, uh, there is a setup so that we can connect you with a roommate. So someone is taking care of that as well. And that way you can share the room and reduce the cost for yourself if that is something that you would like to do. Um, and it's just gonna be incredible. We'll be docking in different countries in Mexico, in Belize, and in Honduras. And so it's a chance to really explore this part of the world that I have such a strong uh, connection to that I have made my home for over six years now. Uh, and also to learn astrology and also to connect with like-minded people and to be out of our comfort zone and to have Reiki every day uh, and to be able to truly share uh, and to be with people who understand. I think that that is all part of what this journey is going to be. And I'm really looking forward to growing and experiencing it right along with you. So you can learn more about that cruise experience on my website, NadiaShaw.com and on the events page. And again, the link is in the description below. And I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. If you're watching this on the live, last week I did my very first premiere uh, and we had a great chat. It was so much fun uh, communicating with you guys in real time, watching this video in real time. So if you're on the chat right now, thank you for being here. I try to make sure to acknowledge and communicate with everyone who is in the group. Uh, and of course, if you are watching this regularly, as usual, thank you for that as well. I'm truly so grateful for this moment with you, whether you are a friend or a fan or a student or a superstar. I thank you for your trust and for helping me and being part of affirming love and wisdom in the world and so much more. I am so grateful. Thank you. Well, thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.